The town of Ballarat has long been a staunchly Catholic place, and Catholic Ballarat's favourite son was a strapping young priest called George Pell. George Pell was like a father figure. He was the biggest figure in the church in Ballarat. It was to be a brilliant career, Archbishop of Melbourne. We place ourselves in the presence of God, our loving Father. Archbishop of Sydney. And suffering and evil will not have the last word. Now Cardinal, based in the Vatican, he's one of the most powerful men in the Catholic Church. Well, I think he never shied away from being seen as the face of the Catholic Church in Australia. While George Pell's career was advancing through the church, a very different story was emerging from Ballarat. In that town, a generation of children lost its innocence to clergy abuse. A generation of adults is now dealing with the consequences. It was never to be spoken of. If you did, uh, you were dirty. Uh, you're an outcast to your family. Since the Child Abuse Royal Commission exposed the extent of the problem, Ballarat's churches are now enclosed in so-called loud fences to symbolise ending that silence. St Alepius has perhaps the loudest fence of all. Serial predator Gerald Ridsdale was at one time parish priest and a ring of pedophile brothers who taught at the school abused and beat dozens of children. You're like a dog, you've been beaten too much. You've got no confidence. You can't talk and you'll never talk. You feel ashamed. The legacy is still felt in Ballarat. There's still places in this town now like where we drive past every day and you, have, you see the gouges out of the telegraph pole where you know that friends have ran into it to kill themselves. George Pell was also a presence in the children's lives at St Olepius in the 1970s. Father Pell was the Episcopal Vicar for Education for the Ballarat Diocese. He'd also lived in the St Olepius Presbytery with Gerald Ridsdale earlier in the 70s. And he was always just the godly figure, you know, we all had to look up to him and, like, we'd even get told in class, you know, George Pell's coming today, so brush your hair and tuck yourself in and, yeah. He was big, solid man, and had eyes that'd stare right through you. It'd pierce your heart. Very strong, scary man. In a letter from the time tendered to the Royal Commission, George Pell described his Episcopal Vicar role as part of, quote, the essential link between bishop, priests, parents, teachers and students. Terry Laidler was a Victorian priest in the 1970s and he knew the system well. What sort of person would you want in that role? Somebody, I suppose, who has that heart, the the safety and the welfare of the kids that the system educates. This former student would often see George Pell at St Olepius. His name is Lyndon Monument. On long summer days in Ballarat, Lyndon Monument, like most kids in the inland town, would head to the Eureka Pool. And there, very often, would be Father Pell. He'd play games like throw the kids out of the water like and you'd put your leg in his hands and he'd one two three and then he'd throw you out of the water but it was only ever with boys there's never any girls flying off his shoulders or playing with him in the pool it was always boys darren mooney was another kid who used to play with pell at the pool every summer he'd throw us off his shoulders there'd be three or four on him at a time crawling all over him the front the back he would grab you from, have his hands on your backside and then he'd push you off. He just seemed to be there all day, every day. 
But Lyndon Monument has told police that in the summer of 1978-79, the seemingly innocent game with Father Pell began to conceal something else beneath the water. He says the priest would unclasp his hands and use his free hand to molest him. You know, his hand touching your genitals and stuff on the outside of your bathers or your shorts, and then that slowly became hand down the front of the pants or your bathers or whatever you call them. Under the water? Under the water. Lyndon Monument told police and 7.30 George Pell would touch his penis, testicles and anus before throwing him in the air. I just tried not to think about it. It's deserted here at the Eureka Pool at this time of year, but in summer in the 1970s, it was a hive of activity. The family who owned the pool at that time have confirmed to 7.30 that George Pell was a constant fixture and he was always surrounded by children. But they said they never saw anything untoward and if they had of, he would have been sent away and they would have called the police. When contacted by police, the pool manager's wife says she never saw any behaviour by George Pell that concerned her. He was very popular with the children. Her statement is one of many made to Victoria Police's Task Force SANO, which investigates claims of sexual abuse coming out of the Royal Commission. Victoria's Police Commissioner Graham Ashton confirmed last month that Task Force Sano is investigating multiple allegations against the Cardinal and, if necessary, detectives would fly to Rome to interview George Pell. He said at that point it had not been put to him as necessary. The Commissioner declined an interview with 7.30 but his spokesman confirmed this is very much a live investigation. The detectives contacted Lyndon Monument last July. I kept throwing them off and then eventually they just asked me if I'd give them five minutes of their time, which I did. Why didn't you want to be involved at the start? Um, because it was a lot of pain for not only me, but for a lot of other people. And I learnt to deal with things by just keeping them close to me, I suppose. He eventually agreed that making the statement was the right thing to do. In it, he also says Father Pell invited him into the change rooms after the swimming. He'd undress and then he'd say to us to undress. Um, so we'd undress and then he'd just, yeah, teach you how to dry your testicles and, you know, in between your bum and stuff like that. And while he was doing this, was he wearing clothes? No. In his police interview, Lyndon Monument said he didn't know why Father Pell insisted that he and his mates go to the change rooms after he finished playing with them in the pool. He said, I look back now and think that he only wanted to perv on us when he was naked. After the change rooms, Lyndon Monument says he'd put his wet underpants and shorts back on and go back to play at the pool all day. I didn't like it, but um, because it, it was a church and just he was George Powell, we just you just weren't going to ever say anything. You know what I mean? Cardinal Pell declined an interview for this story, but in a statement, his office said he emphatically and unequivocally rejects any allegations of sexual abuse against him. He said he regrets that the sensationalist attention to these unfounded and untrue claims might cause distress to genuine victims and he encourages anyone with a legitimate complaint to pursue it through the correct channels. 7.30 has contacted many other people who as children went to the Eureka Pool in the late 1970s. All remember George Pell playing the throwing game with the boys in the water. Many remember seeing the priest going into the change rooms. It's been something that uh, we've spoken about for years, well before uh, any abuse allegations came up. Darren Mooney felt uneasy about George Pell in the change rooms. He's now a principal of a tiny school north of Ballarat. But back then, he and his group of friends were a couple of grades above Linden Monument at St Olivia's. Probably in particular the most memorable part was George in the, the change rooms. 
he would um, be in the change rooms naked uh, on a regular basis and he'd be telling himself off. He'd have his tail and he'd be sort of rushing himself like that and like that. And I dare say that a man in his position should know better than to you know, be undressing in front of kids. Fair enough to go and swim and play with kids and do what you're going to do. And, uh, but at the end of the day, um, to put yourself in a position where you're naked in front of young children, I think it's just unacceptable. Behind this wood pile, behind this shed, lives Damien Dignan. Damien Dignan was the task force witness who suggested police contact Lyndon Monument, his childhood best friend at St Alipia's. As they grew up, they occasionally discussed their experiences at the Eureka Pool, though they both say these days they aren't in contact and haven't been for a couple of years since well before Task Force Say No detectives ever met them last July. Damien Dignan also told police he remembers playing the throwing game with George Pell at the Eureka Pool. What would he do? Grab you. Around the testes, around the anus. How did it make you feel? Scared. Oh, so scared but hurt. Uh, very forceful around the anus. Could there ever be an interpretation that it just so happened that his hands weren't slipped down there, you know, by mistake? Fair enough. One time, I might have got to a stage where every time he picked her up, it was there. And uh, not much fun, no. In his statement, Damien Dignan told police, Father Pell was making me feel very uncomfortable when he was grabbing me on the penis and testicles and throwing me in the air. I never said anything to Father Pell when he grabbed me around the penis and testicles because I was scared of him. Towards the end, Father Pell began to hurt me around the crotch area when he threw me into the air. I didn't like it and I knew what he was doing was wrong. So what did that make you decide to do in terms of your attending the pool? Uh, not really go there. Um, not swim there. Like Lyndon Monuments, Damien Dignan's allegations remain untested by the law. 7.30 sent questions to Cardinal Pell. He did not address specific allegations, but said... The Cardinal does not wish to cause any distress to any victim of abuse. However, claims that he sexually abused anyone in any place at any time in his life are totally untrue and completely wrong. He denies the allegations absolutely and says that they, and any acceptance of them by the ABC, are nothing more than a scandalous smear campaign which appears to be championed by the ABC. If there was any credibility in any of these claims, they would have been pursued by the Royal Commission by now. However, the Royal Commission told 7.30 it only investigates institutions. Allegations against an individual like Cardinal Pell are outside its terms of reference. It refers all new claims of clergy abuse to police. Damien Dignan says he was terrified of Father Pell. It's sort of hard to explain as it... <clears throat> To sit in a confession box with a very, very, very strong, scary man sitting on the other side. We were very, very scared as little kids. Damien Dignan was also fearful of some teachers at St Alipius. He has given another statement to police outlining serious and repeated abuse by a female relief teacher. He says that abuse had an enormous psychological impact on him. He tried to alert a family member. And what happened? She took her shoe off and hit me in the face about six or seven times and said I was dirty. So that can't have given you much confidence to go and talk to her about George Pell? No. 
Lyndon Monument says he too had kept silent about other serious abuse unrelated to George Pell, in his case by a vicious St Alepius teacher who made him masturbate and perform oral sex. The only person Lyndon Monument told was his brother Craig, who advised his little brother never to speak of it. With the George Pell thing, we just kept that quiet and kept it all amongst us because you feel like a, a dickhead. No one wanted to be called a gay bow and you know what I mean by your friends when you're young. Like, they just don't want that shit getting out. There'll be so many people in Australia thinking, but this is a small town where there's been so much discussion about this issue. Why hasn't it come out about Pell? I can't answer that because, well, why didn't it come out about Jared Ritzdale? Why didn't it come out about the rest of them, you know? Like, it was all hushed, hushed, and oh, I've seen kids come battered and bruised to school that were beaten the shit out of by their parents. Why? For mentioning that they'd been molested. At St Olympia's? At St Olympia's. I mate that, yeah, and I feel terrible he's not with us anymore. But I've encouraged him to go and tell his parents and then like I said, I had to look at him and he'd been beaten to an absolute pulp by his father for going home and speaking badly against the Catholics after he'd been raped the day before. And this is someone who took his own life? Yeah. George Pell left the Ballarat Diocese for Melbourne in 1984. He then spent his summers at Torquay Beach, where he was a member of the local surf club. Local dad, Les Tyak's kids, were keen surfers, and Mr Tyak used to see George Pell around the club. One summer day, he says he witnessed a strange incident, so strange it later compelled him to go to police. He says he walked into the club change rooms and found George Pell and three boys he estimates were aged between 8 and 10. I said, hi, George. And uh, at that time, he was uh, uh, toweling had the towel going across his uh, shoulders, drying his back, and, but he was facing uh, three young boys, only uh, about three or four metres across from him. And I thought it was a little strange, but I put my gear down on the uh, bench and walked into the showers. I was in the showers for probably five to ten minutes, and when I came out, um, the boys had got dressed, but uh, Pal just had the towel over his right shoulder, still facing the boys and uh, the boys were looking at him. Uh, there was no communication between them, but Pell was looking at the boys, they were looking at him. Um, I immediately thought, this is not right. Uh, there is something, something amiss here. The uh, showers were in this part here. Les Tyak says he was disturbed that the naked man had stood there for 10 minutes facing the boys. And I thought that was not on very strange uh, situation for an adult uh, to be full frontal to three young boys. Um, I said to the, uh, the young boys, uh, finish doing what you're doing, off you go. When they left, I then said to George Pell, I know what you're up to, piss off, get out of here. If I see you back in this club again, I'll call the police. He then turned around. Mr Tyak says the way George Pell's torso was angled during the incident also raised alarm bells. Well, it makes me very suspicious that uh, he was exposing himself to those uh, three young boys. He made sure that at no time was I uh, given the opportunity to see the front of him. And you thought that was suspicious? Very suspicious. Very suspicious. Because when, when, when I challenged him, uh, he made no response to me at all which I thought quite odd. You know, I'm certain that if I'd been challenged in such a manner, I certainly would have fired up with questioning, what, what do you mean, what are you talking about? But no, Pell went very silent, didn't say a word. When the Royal Commission was sitting last year, Les Tyak decided to make his statement to Victoria Police. There may have been other instances out there in the uh, public domain uh, that people had seen or uh, witnessed and uh, so I decided to report it so that those collating all the, uh, all the evidence uh, could put it aside there and it might help form a uh, dossier uh, on, uh, on Pell's activities. 
Cardinal Pell did not specifically address the allegations made by Les Tyak, but says more generally that no request has been made to interview Cardinal Pell, nor has he received any details of these claims from the police or anyone. In late May, the Cardinal was advised by the Sano Task Force that there had been no change in the status of the investigation since a newspaper reported in February that an investigation was taking place. Cardinal Pell makes the point that he has apologised to victims of abuse of other priests on behalf of the church many times and has met with many victims personally. In Melbourne throughout the 1980s and 90s, George Pell continued to advance through the church, becoming Archbishop in 1996. It was to become a profoundly important role. He was the first bishop in Australia to set up a formal process for dealing with allegations of abuse, the Melbourne response. I was very confused. I responded poorly. He later told the Royal Commission he knew almost nothing of the abuse caused by priests in the diocese during his ascendancy and said others in the church conspired to hide the truth from him. Are you telling me they deceived you? Um, yes. It's an extraordinary position, Cardinal. Um, Council, this was an extraordinary world. A world of crimes and cover-ups. But as George Pell was defending his legacy on the handling of other priests, Task Force Sano was investigating complaints against the Cardinal himself. 7.30 has now seen eight statements to the Task Force from complainants, witnesses and family members. The complaints range over several decades, right into the 1990s when George Pell was Archbishop of Melbourne. At that time, he's accused of abusing two teenage choir boys here at St Patrick's Cathedral. The boys asked to leave the choir soon after the alleged abuse occurred. One of them died in tragic circumstances two years ago. The other managed to keep his life on an even keel and is working with Task Force Sano detectives. In 2002, George Pell became Archbishop of Sydney. He was at the height of his powers when a bombshell dropped. A man came forward to the Catholic Church to allege that George Pell abused him when he, the complainant, was 12 years old. The alleged victim claims Dr Pell abused him in 1961. He says it happened at a camp on Victoria's Phillip Island when Dr Pell was a trainee priest. The complainant alleged that on several occasions the man known to him as Big George put his hands down his pants and, quote, got a good handful of his penis and testicles. He says George Pell molested him on several occasions in a tent and once under his bathers when they were in the water jumping in the waves. The Archbishop has stood aside from his position, saying he welcomes an investigation of the complaint as an opportunity to clear his name. These allegations against me are lies and I deny them utterly and totally. I uh, believe completely uh, George Pell's denial. <laughs> The Catholic Church held an internal inquiry, heard by retired Supreme Court Justice Alex Southwell. After the complaint was made, a file was compiled on the complainant, who had been a wharfy, a convicted criminal and an alcoholic. The details of the man's criminal history then appeared in the media. The complainant's credibility was subjected to a forceful attack. Nonetheless, Justice Southwell still found that the complainant's evidence was truthful. But the judge found the same of George Pell, so he didn't find against Pell. I find that I am not satisfied that the complaint has been established. There's no mud to stick, I've been exonerated. The experience of the Southwell complainant is why Lyndon Monument and Damien Dignan are declaring some painful truths about their own lives. Since he left St Alepius behind, Lyndon Monument suffered great personal tragedy. His wife suicided in 2002. His brother Craig suicided in 2007. Several St Alepius friends who survived sexual abuse by clergy also took their lives. Lyndon Monument's life spun out of control. 
that's what I took to drugs. Just, yeah, just a blanket all out. And then still to this day, like, I know it sounds horrible and I'd never hurt myself because I love my family and my kids, but I don't really like living. Lyndon Monument became a drug addict and for a while dealt amphetamines. He was prosecuted for assault of his then girlfriend and another man over a drug debt in 2010 and he spent 11 months in jail. I deserve jail for what I did and I don't blame that on nothing. He's now a manual labourer. When I'm not doing that, I just try and go to sleep as quick as I can. So I hate being awake. So. Keeping silent also took its toll on Damien Dignan. He too has run foul of the law for assault and drink driving. He has leukaemia and lives alone in a tiny granny flat. I never ever dealt with it. I never spoke of it. Very distant, didn't show emotion, took the alcohol to not have feelings, I lost everything I had. Good partner, <clears throat> beautiful children, home. Freedom. Yeah. Psychiatrist Carolyn Quadrio is a specialist in child sexual abuse who gave evidence to the Royal Commission about the profound effect abuse has as children grow up. And so you'd see this very sad trajectory that people get onto of getting into trouble because of substance abuse, dropping out of school because of substance abuse, not, not succeeding in employment, having dysfunctional relationships, having relationship breakdowns. The older they get, the less sympathy they get until you get to the prison situation where you see huge numbers of men who've been se se severely abused during their childhood but are now simply labelled as bad. The ABC doesn't suggest the difficulties Lyndon Monument and Damien Dignan have suffered in their adult lives should be attributed solely to what they say George Pell did to them. Nor do they claim that. Both men suffered other serious abuse and other personal tragedy. 7.30 understands that the George Pell file has been referred to the Office of Public Prosecutions for advice. Some of the complaints made to 7.30 and police clearly amount to criminal allegations. Some may never make it to court. Regardless, they do raise a serious question of vital public interest, whether George Pell was ever the appropriate person to drive the church's response to child sexual abuse and whether he should stand aside from his position at the centre of church power in the Vatican. I think, like everyone, he's entitled to, you know, presumptions of innocence on criminal matters, to an assumption of goodwill, uh, you know, on, on other matters. But I think once something gets to the level of allegations that, you know, on any reasonable standard are worth, you know, giving some credit to, no, I think he's got to stand aside. Damien Dignan and Lyndon Monument have been waiting for a year since they made their police statements last July. They had eagerly anticipated George Pell coming back to Australia to give evidence to the Royal Commission and hoped police might be able to question him. Royal Commission no-show. George Pell's lawyers say he's too ill to give evidence in Melbourne next week. On December 11, George Pell issued a statement saying he could not fly to Australia on doctor's advice. The Royal Commission accepted his evidence and the Cardinal did not fly. And so how did you feel when you found out that George Pell had a heart condition? Shattered. Absolutely shattered. 
While Lyndon Monument and Damien Dignan believe detectives are working hard on the investigation, they worry that even if police have a case that warrants charges, George Pell will never face his accusers because he'll never come back to Australia. I'm disgusted, bitter, angry. I just want him to come back and look me in the eye. None of these people made the decision to speak to 7.30 lightly. They hope that it may encourage others who are silent to feel that they too can come forward. I've got to a certain stage in my mind that I don't really want the apology. Um, I want to tell my kids. Well, they haven't got a father. We shouldn't be ashamed of what happened to us. It's not our fault. We've lived with feeling like shit for too long. We don't have to no more. Louise Milligan with that report produced by Andy Burns. And if that story has raised concerns for you, remember, help is available. You can call Lifeline on 13, 14, sorry, 13 11 14 or Beyond Blue on 1300 22 46 36. Cardinal Pell's full statement will be on our website soon.